Um, another big challenge we're uh, faced with these days, um, along with shrinking budgets and um, greater demand for programming, uh, tapeless media or file-based media is coming onto the scene big time. So I thought I'd work, uh, walk you through a little bit of our workflow and how we're dealing with it uh, for the various types of file base. Basically, um, what happens is uh, a very common media we're seeing is P2 and XDCAM. Um, and we, we treat these two types very similarly. Um, the raw media comes in on the card. And the first thing we do is uh, create a folder on our desktop of our uh, Macintosh and we name it by uh, a tape name. So, what we do is take the entire contents of that card and dump it into the folder. So essentially you have one card equals one tape. So we're almost trying to mimic the tape workflow in a sense in terms of simplicity of naming. Then uh, you need to have a secure backup of that media, obviously. So we then move it to our SAN system and we copy the entire folder over. Yeah. So then you have the rated uh, safety of uh, a SAN system for your media. And obviously you have many folders for all your tapes. Yeah, also later that those uh, files will be in our case delivered back to our clients because that's part of the deliverables they need to have the raw media files uh, available so typically while that copy process is happening to the server we'll also uh, open up our AVID and begin the AMA linking to those files. So, uh, once we load up all the files in the bins, then we want to consolidate those files over to our ISIS system. Obviously, at this point, you have to be very careful to make sure that you've copied every single and consolidated every single file from the folder into ISIS. And we're bringing those files in at native formats. Um, we're not down converting. Uh, we're keeping up the full resolution. The files are coming in at full resolution. Uh, one, one thing we've seen um, that can happen with these cards is if you are using a camera, for example, a P2 camera that can take multiple cards. What happens uh, if you run out of space on one card and you're still recording the um, you end up with two QuickTime movies that are part of the same media file. Yeah, so those are called span clips and those um, can create problems in relinking back to the, uh, the media. So what we do is we make sure if we find those we, we get the both files together in one folder and then the Avid can read those. 
、えー、とこのように撮影されたものですと1枚のカメラに映像の途中まで中,中心まで中、えー、真ん中ぐらいなんですねでもう1枚のカードの方にその続きから撮影されていって結果的にファイルが分割されていることになるんですがこのようなメディアっていうのをアビットで読み込むときにちょっとトラブルを起こすことがありますのでこのようなときには、えー、分割されてしまったファイルをどちらかにコピーしてあげてから読み込んであげると、えー、アビットはきちんとそれをリンクして読み込んでくれることができます And from there, we're off and running, and, and we go into our normal post production process. Um, so, these are just some images uh, from the screenshots from our process. Consolidate, relinking. And、uh, another type of media we're seeing a lot of these days is、uh, from the small GoPro cameras, which are mounted on various、uh, interesting places. Also,、uh, Canon 5D or Phantom high speed camera or flip cameras. So,、uh, all these cameras are creating various flavors of quick time. So,、uh, we're actually importing these rather than consolidating these into Avid. We almost think of them as、uh, graphic files in a way where you import. Uh, rather than、uh, ingest.、Uh, so the workflow is, is similar at the beginning where you,、um, you take all your media from the drive, typically, or a card, and you copy it to a folder on the desktop. But one thing we found is that these files.、Uh, that Come off these cameras are very generic. Yeah, so you could end up with many media,、uh, many files in Avid ISIS that have the exact same name. So here's a sample of what we might add at the beginning of the file name. So you would have Avid as the project, then you'd have the date, and then you'd have the camera, and then you'd have tape number. So、um, you start with the generic name, and then we add our prefix on the front. And at that point,、um, we do our copy to the SAN server as well. And then we do our import into Avid at that point as well. So now you've got the, all the critical information in the file name, and you're pretty safe at that point. Also, with this type of、uh, media, you can decide to go with a standard resolution or a low resolution on the first import、uh, and work in the offline mode in low resolution to save space. And then later, when you're in your finishing stage, you can do a batch import、uh, from the same files, typically from the server at that point or the SAN server. And bring them back in at high res. Yeah, so you know, these are what we use to kind of、uh, help us navigate the tricky landscape of tapeless.
、えー、これでまあテンプレスの、えー、そのなんていうんですかね、ワンプリッキーな部分っていうものをまあ避けることができる。Yeah, but we we recognize that、um, it's not really a choice to move into the file-based or the tape tapeless-based、uh, workflow because the new cameras that are coming out are so powerful and our clients are demanding that we work with cameras that can really capture those new looks. もちろんこれが全てのファイルベースをカバーできるというのが多いので、市場にはまた次々に新しいカメラというものが生まれてきて、クライアントはそれを使いたいというニーズがあるので、まあ、そのことに関しては、もう次々それに対して対応していかなければならないと考えています。Yeah, so it does cost a fair amount of money to have live, very secure storage for all these files,、um, but、uh, it's, there's really no way around it. えまあ、そあのそうですね。あのすべてをカバーする、まあ、今の段階ですべてを準備するということはできないですけども、その新しいフォーマットが生まれてくるというのはもう避けられないと思うので、そこへの準備というのはしないと。So one one of the products that、uh, Powderhouse is looking to invest in in the very near future is some kind of an archival system where we can push those files to a less expensive storage and then retrieve them on demand. なのでパウダーハウスでは今そのあ簡単なアーカイブストレージみたいなものを用意しておいてそこに一度すべてを保管しておいて、まあ、何かあったらそこから引き戻すというような仕組みが作れないかなということを今検討しています。And we're pretty sure is on that right now and まあアビットが先ほどご紹介したシステムですけど、まあ、あんなものも準備しているということはもう分かっているのでそれはとても楽しみにしています。